Hang on here. We have a caller. Caller, go ahead. You can go ahead and say what you want to say. Aha, Colon. My name is Hank Hill, and I'm calling from Ireland, Texas, and I sell propane and propane accessories. My good old buddy Boomhauer told me that the word squaw was a really bad word, but he doesn't know why, so maybe you could tell us what this word means. Okay, thank you very kindly, good sir. Wash te cola mi taku ye o ya sin. That's a cool guy there. <laughs> wash, te, wash te cola, what the hell is that? I like that guy. This is Hank Hill from Arlen, Texas. Okay. <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, that's a really good question. That's why I accepted it. Yeah, because a lot of times I might get a call and I'll take it in the background and I'll see what they have to say. And a lot of times it's not even good. Yeah. <laughs> But this question was is really good. That's why I let it on the air. <laughs> Damn, I wish I could get more calls like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, it's a good question. Let me let me explain that. The word squaw is a very bad word. It comes from the times when the mountain men first started coming into existence. These are immigrants from France, Scotland, and Ireland, and England. Mainly, mainly those countries. Uh, some maybe from Italy, maybe some from Spain, but mainly it was France, Scotland, and Ireland mainly those three, and some from England too. They came to seek their fortune, and a lot of them ended up in what today is known as Canada. They're just men. There's no women among them. Well, not many. And what they would do is go into the mountains and trap animals and kill them for their hides. And then they would sell the hides to fur companies. Some of these mountain men, they set up shop. They had a what you call a trading post out in the middle of nowhere. It was kind of like a store. And the way a lot of people did business was by trading. So like, for example, a mountain men would bring their hides to this trading post. And to the trader, they would trade goods. So maybe the hides were worth a certain amount of money. And so then they could get whatever they need, beans or coffee or gin or alcohol. So that's how they would do business. And Indians started to come into this transaction business too. So they would bring things to this trader in exchange for goods as well. And a lot of these traders were very, they're businessmen, yeah? So they want to get as much as they can for as a, a low price as possible. So they want to take advantage of you. So what they did to Indians is they gave them whiskey. And one thing I have to mention here, and people didn't know this until the 1900s, is that Native American people and Asian people, we are missing something in our bodies. We're missing an enzyme that everybody else in this world has. And one of the bad side effects from this is that when we drink alcohol, we become alcoholics very fast. We can become alcoholics very fast, whereas everybody else in this world, it takes them a long time. And people can drink and drink and drink and drink and, and get drunk and, and next day hang over and then they do it again and nothing. But with Indians and Asian people, we become alcoholics incredibly fast. But they didn't know this back then, okay? So these traders would say to the Indian, here, have a drink of this, and let me see what your hides are worth. 
And so while the Indian guy is drinking and he's getting drunk and, you know, it's starting to hit him and he wants more. So then uh, the trader says, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the bottle for all of these animal hides. And so the, the Indian guy would say, yeah, sure, just give me the bottle. And so then he would uh, walk out and maybe he was supposed to get goods for his family. But instead he got this whiskey bottle. So now that's how alcohol was introduced to Indians, by trickery, to trick us out of things. And so Indian men, they wanted more and more alcohol. And the women, they were starting to get abused by their husbands. And so as a result, the Indian family systems were starting to fall apart because of the domestic violence that's happening. Fathers were starting to rape women. And so now Indian society is beginning to fall apart. And then some of these Indian men started to become alcoholic and they wanted more whiskey, but they didn't have anything. They were drunk all the time, so they never went out hunting. They never went out to get animal hides. So their families were starving, but they didn't care. They just wanted to get drunk. And sometimes the women started to get drunk too. And so when the Indian would go to the trading post, oftentimes the trader would say, well, I'll take your wife. Or why don't you sell me your daughter and I'll give you five bottles of whiskey. And so the Indian guy was, yeah, okay. So now the sex trade is starting. The sex trade is starting between the traders and the Indians. And so they started to sell their daughters to these trading posts. And then the trading post would then sell these girls to the mountain men. And then the mountain men would trade these girls with each other like they're trading baseball cards or something. And so it was a sex trade that was happening. And so in this area, the people speak a language that's called from the Algonquin language group. Now, that's several tribes, okay? That's several tribes that speak this Algonquin group, okay? The languages are not the same, but they come from the same root, okay? And that root is called Algonquin. and in one of the tribes, I think it might be Algonquin. There is a tribe called Algonquin, by the way, okay? One of these tribes, they have a word for vagina. And so a lot of these mountain men, they worked with Indians. So they learned some Indian languages. And so they knew that the word for vagina, but they shortened that word. It was a long word. So these mountain men shortened that word to squaw. And this was to mean that this woman is a whore. She's a prostitute. She's a sex slave. She belongs to somebody. She's not free. This is like British people. When they talk about a woman like this, they call her a cunt. In America, someone like this is a slut. Well, from my time. We said slut. Now today, people say whole, but a whore. So the word squaw is really not a good word. It's very disrespectful to women because what this is saying is that the only thing a woman is good for is a fuck. That's it. And so this is what that word means. So among Native people, this is a really not a good thing to say. It's not a good thing to say anywhere, but I know you see it in TV shows, but TV, old movies, they're all full of shit to begin with. There's hardly anything correct in those movies. And so as a result, the movies perpetuate and promote this word, squaw. So today in America, there's mountains and rivers all have that name. In Phoenix, there was a big mountain, call it Squaw Peak. Is that what it's called? Or Squaw Butte or Squaw Mountain or something like that. There's a Squaw River Valley someplace. And I think in Phoenix, they changed it. Because for years, Native people have been protesting that. And finally, they won. 
Yeah, so there's places, it's always a national park, something like that, where you see this word Squaw Valley, Squaw Mountain, Squaw Peak, Squaw River, things like that. And now they're slowly starting to change that because this is the same way as calling a black person the N-word. It's the same thing. So it's not a good thing to say. So anyway, that's a good question. There are a lot of people who use that word and they don't know. Some of the people that use this word, they're good people. They just don't know that this word is a bad word. But it is. It's a very, very bad word. So don't use that word squaw. That's not a good word. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otehige. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called to purchase my books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.